Hey Explorers, Mark Williamson here, and this is my channel, Age of Exploring. Today I'm on Route 66, as a matter of fact, that's part of old Route 66 right over there. Um, I'm on my way up to uh, Wrightwood, the San Andreas Fault, to explore how the San Andreas Fault uh, affected the geography uh, through the area. Let's let this guy go by, because he's got a really awesome car. Look at that. That is nice. Out cruising Route 66. Just turned left on Swigout Road, Whiteheart Road. This valley that we're coming up here on the right is actually created by the fault. The fault runs right down the middle of it. I don't know if you can see it over there, but right there there's a rock change, the color of the rock changes. And that's because of the San Andreas Fault. It's called the Blue Cut. And it's basically where the rock has been ground down because of the action of the fault to uh, a fine powder. And I'm, we're going to actually... Uh, Take a look at some places, other places where that, that happened. Just talked to a gentleman. It's probably about, uh, said, four or five miles of dirt road. Pretty smooth, he said. He got hit in the face by a bee, but it didn't sting me, thank goodness. Because that would suck. The San Andreas Fault is a slip strike fault, meaning that uh, it's not converging and it's not spreading apart. It's just going side to side. This would be the Pacific Plate, and LA would be like down here, and this would be the North American Plate, and San Francisco would be up there. And so as the, this fault is moving, it would be sliding like this. So eventually, in about 20 million years, LA would be north of San Francisco, and uh, that would change some things, but it's 20 million years from now. Looking up the canyon right here, you can see where the fault is. The side of that side is the North American plate. This side is the Pacific plate. That side's going north. This side's coming uh, south. And we're going to head right up that canyon, following the fault up that canyon right there. I'm at uh, Lost Lake. Uh, it's a, I think it's a county park in the Cajon Pass. And... You can see this is a, a sag pond right here. A sag pond is a, a body of water that is trapped by the San Andreas Fault, by the two plates, um, so, and it can't escape. So as it fills up with drainage, it forms a sag pond. And you can see how it's long and skinny here. It starts here and goes down there. That's uh, the 15 freeway through the Cajon Pass. And you can see um, this, the, the what do we call it? The fault that goes right through here, okay? And it fills up with water. So what you see right here is, is called a scarp. It's uh, the edge of the, the fault, and it's caused by the little bit of the action of, of raising and lowering of the fault as it grinds by. And this is the one of the ones that are visible. Most of the time they're hidden by vegetation and brush, and you can't see them. But you can see the, the, the scarp here. That's it's called a scarp. It's the edge of the fault. This is what I like about getting out and exploring on a motorcycle. It's out here basically in nature. Yes, you've got a helmet on and you've got a bike underneath you, but after riding a bike across the country or trying to, a motor makes it much more easy, but you still get pretty much the same experience. Okay, the country goes by you a little quicker, but stop the side of the road here. That is the Clyde Ranch. Uh, I think it was founded or established in the early 1900s. And um, Wyatt Earp, who actually used to live in San Bernardino, would come up here and visit his friend, Mr. Clyde, and spend some time here. Clyde Ranch, right there. What a cool place to live, and the history of it, too. Wow. I'm out here on uh, one of the higher points on San Andreas. I'm not sure the altitude, but I will probably put it right up there someplace I don't know anyways and behind me is the San Andreas Fault if you look down that valley right there um, on a clear day which is not on a clear day you could see all the extra way into actually Palm Springs because San Andreas Fault cuts across that's going past down there and it cuts across uh, through the, uh, the valley the, the San Bernardino Mountains and then Palm Springs is in that little area that you can't see because of the, not smog, I think it's just haze. 
but that is the San Andreas Fault going right down the valley right there. All right, just entered Wrightwood, which is literally right on the San Andreas Fault. Population of about uh, 4,000, founded by, uh, as a, originally as a, uh, I guess, a cooperative of ranches by Mr. Wright, and uh, is now uh, actually home to the Wrightwood Ski Area, and uh, which was established originally right after World War II. Um, and uh, the state of California put in Highway 138 to reduce the amount of mountain driving needed for the uh, to come here. Um, and it's one of the popular ski resorts in Southern California because it doesn't require much mountain driving and it doesn't take very long to get to. So we're going to be taking a look at uh, Wrightwood here and uh, taking a look at some of the features on the, the San Andreas Fault as we go through. This is uh, actually the San Andreas Fault right here. It goes down this little valley here, this little dent here. They've kind of dug a track through it. This is the fault depression right here. This is where the fault goes, right in this little depression. It goes up and down this thing right there. That is the fault depression in the road. You wouldn't even know it if you didn't, if I, I didn't look it up. It's just a low spot in the road. All right, this is uh, another sag pound. It's actually part of, a, I think, the Wrightwood Country Club or something like that. Um, and they've turned it into a swimming hole, but you can see where the sag pond goes more Along, less along the line of the, uh, the fault and now they've cemented in the edges and things and left the beach here and uh, but that's a side pond again this means the fault goes right along here right along this area here um, so we are literally on the fault line right here Wrightwood California heading up the valley that way okay coming up to downtown Wrightwood and uh, on the left-hand side here is actually the Wrightwood Museum. Uh, unfortunately, it is closed at this time because of COVID. I think it is. No, maybe not. Oh, that's a cool map there. That's nice. Got a farmer's market over there. Wrightwood, happening place. Not sure it should be at this time, but you know, that's cool backpacker looking for a hit ride and I don't think I'm the person to give it to him. Oh, nice thing. There we go. That's cool. I'm here at, uh, it's good looking hair. I'm here at the Mountain High uh, National Forest Visitor Center, which is closed because of COVID. Um, and you can see, uh, you know, what it looks like. But then over there is the one of the towers that I, we actually, reason I stopped. It looks like the door is not locked. And an unlocked door is an invitation. So let's take a look and see. I don't have a problem going in. Don't have to attract attention to it. Hey, uh, I'm going to tell you the history of the tower because there's really not much to see inside. But the tower was built in 1923 as a pedestrian bridge over the highway because that was when hiking became really, really big in the LA area. And Doing research on the tower, I also learned that I was in misinformed about the Olympics. Um, in 1929, L.A. tried to get the Olympics, the 32 Olympics, here, um, but they lost out to Lake Placid in New York, and that's where the Olympics were held. Right, inside the tower in Wrightwood. There was supposed to be an archway. This was one side and then it was going to go over over the, the road here and to another tower that would be located over on this side. And I, I have a picture where I think the tower was going to go because it has some different colored rocks in the, uh, the wall, the wall right here. But that tower was to come in commemorate and welcome the visitors into the area. All right, this is another sag pond I've stopped at, and I'm gonna actually head on the other side over there um, to take a look at it. I'm here at the 
Jackson Lake Sag Pond, which I just showed you from the other side near the road over there. Um, the Jackson Lake Sag Pond is great because this is the best angle I can get on a sag pond. You can see the fault goes right up the valley this way. And as a result, the water gets trapped. And usually you notice that the, the east side or the north side is straighter because that's where the fault is. And so the water's trapped on the Pacific plate here and uh, makes it so they can't, you can't, uh, the water can't escape. Back is what's behind me is called fa fault gouge. Um, basically, what happens is this is actually the rock that has been pulverized and ground down by the, 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 the action, the slippage of the fault. And you can see it's a really fine powder that, as a result, just uh, grinds the rock down and it just, you can see it, it's just super fine powder. You can see what's left on my hand here. Um, but it's fault gouge and it's what like the blue cut. Okay, there's two different modes. One on a guy on a motorcycle and a freaking beast on a bicycle. That's amazing. I couldn't do that. That's why I got a motorcycle because I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Anyways, um, th this when you see the blue cut, when I pointed out the blue cut earlier in the trip, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing this dust in, and lightness of where the, the fault has ground the rock down and pulverized it into a, a real fine dust. The San Andreas Fault was discovered by Dr. Lawson of Cal Berkeley. It's kind of windy here. Sorry about the noise if you hear that. But it was served by Dr. Lawson in Cal Berkeley in uh, 1895. And he actually named it after the San Andreas Valley up north where he discovered it. Um, and then in 1907, there was a 7 plus magnitude earthquake in the San Francisco air, uh, city area. And looking at the data that he had from there, um, he realized that it went all the way down south to Southern California. It's about 750 miles long. That barn right there, that barn right there, is on the San Andreas Fault. Literally sits on the fault. So, it's coming along here. Goes through that meadow right there. These tr uh, trees are burnt because of the uh, Blue Cut fire. Which started back at the Blue Cut, oddly. Name it after where it starts. So... All this burnt. I guess they managed to save the, the cabins and things. Look at the devastation here. Look at the amount of damage caused by the fire. And then over here, absolutely untouched. So they were able to contain it to that side of the road in that area. Behind me, hopefully you can hear me with my helmet on because I'm not staying here long. Behind me is the north, looking north up the uh, uh, San Andreas Fault and heading that way would be Carrizo Plain and then it heads out towards uh, Monterey and the, the coast in San Francisco but on a clear day you're actually supposed to be able to see uh, Carrizo Plain and the, the mountains over that way but it goes right down this valley just like the valley we looked at going south into Palm Springs this is the valley going north on it Okay, on the side of the road up here is a couple water pumps. And that's because the fault goes right along here and they don't want a side pond to appear in the middle of the road. So they put a pump on them. And I think it's up here. Um, yes. Okay, there's one right over there. You can see the pump in that shed there. That's a water pump right there. But they have the water pump there because that's where the fault is. That's why we went down in that lower area there. And they would like to not have water build up there because of the fault. So they pump the water out from down below so it doesn't have a chance to do that. These guys probably came up the same road I did. They're heading back down the other side. But I am just absolutely in awe of anybody who can ride a bike up these kind of roads. Wow. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe and like it. As always, 
be great, do good, go out and explore.